Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and this is the fifth installment of my monochrome junk journal tutorials. This time I want to basically recap the pages that we made, and then I'll show you a few pages that I made off camera, and we will bind it into journal inserts, and then I'll if I have time, I may do the actual cover. So it may become five and six, or maybe one video. All right, so we have part one. So you saw the tutorial of how page one was made. Then we have part two, and I showed how that page was made, as well as using the mop-up page that was made from part one. Part three, I showed making these little labels and this multi-layer pocket using different elements to make pockets on this side as well. This is just a copy of that. Part four was using an image from basically Canvas Corp brands, Seven Gypsies, Tattered Angels. I can't remember which one. I think this is a Tattered Angels, and I have a link in the description box. And then lots of layers of items in the pockets, and I have a couple of those pages that I made. This was a page that I made from a mop-up, so I just used some elements of stamping. Uh, Linda Coker sent me some little snippets, and I used her idea and kind of made my own little design element just using some scraps of fabric. And on this side, we did I did some stamping using the journal and going around the edges with some stamping in that large botanical rose. This was a printout of one of my stencil drawings that won't necessarily make a good stencil, but I thought it would look kind of cool if I printed it on a piece of paper. And this is the same technique where I showed using some of the Seven Gypsies packaging to make a journal page. And then over here I used the Baroque, Baroque Romance, Baroque stencil on this side. Here I have printed one of the all about robins is monochrome on ivory paper and then just add some embellishments to that and here i've printed one on white paper and then added some items to the inside here i added a little bit of fabric to the edges trying to go through some of my fabric scraps to do that as well as this one and here we are in ivory I think you kind of get the idea here. I went ahead and went all the way down the edge with fabric that I sewed on and again and again. This page I used a mop-up stencil pattern. This is woven boxes I believe and then I stamped some of the fleur-de-lis and then this is key play and then one of the jeweled keys and then on this side I stamped from the Butterfly Cuties Cube, Butterfly Beauties Cube, and this is from the Today, Tomorrow, Yesterday, Farewell, I believe is the cube. I may be called Farewell. Another mop-up. This is from the Connected Flowers. And I think this might be from the Positive Vibes subscription box. Here I used an ivory paper that I mopped up a stencil from one of the stencil clubs and then used the three little birds up here at the top and then some of the beach rose at the bottom. So when you come to this page, this is how it would look down here at the corner. I used some composition notebook pages that I trimmed down and then this was using either tinsel or one of the silver tattered angels and then stamping with the shabby stitches, no, stitches across the top. This was the paper sack that I had. It was a merchandise bag and I cut open one side. This would be the top. I've added some journal cards to it. I have a belly band. I took one of these ledger papers that are from Canvas Court Brands, Seven Gypsies, and folded it and then added some fabric to it just to add some interest. And then I've got a little altered paper clip here to help hold it in place in case it tries to slide out. 
And then in the pocket, I use a piece of cardstock that was printed on one side and I used some notebook paper and stamped on top of it. And this was a repeat of that scrapbook paper and then layering a card on top. Same over here with the little journal card. This one, I took a book page and I painted it with ivory acrylic paint. And then I stamped around that outside edge so it creates some writing space. And I did the same over here. I stamped around the outside edge. This was the leafy branch and this is from the textured edges. I also used a paper punch and punched a couple of layers of paper so it gets that lace effect across the top. And then on this side I stenciled with the diamond with flare stencil and used one of the All About Robins elements. This is an index card and then I just added some elements to the inside as well. This is that piece of paper that I said I thought might have been a photocopy of another paper and I sprayed it with some gold. I think it was Craft Tattered Angels and did some stamping around the edge and added a couple of journal cards to a pocket, lace down the side. And then I used the stitches around the edge and then I used the postcard postmark collage around that outside edge. And I just thought it gives it a really pretty edge. This was some coloring book pages that I just went around the edges with distress ink on this side and then on this side I lightly stenciled. This is from the December 2021 stencil club and this is my henna rose stamp that I stamped around the edge and then from the dream big cube or quartet. And I used basically the same concept, just added some different words to the inside. And this is from one of my older stencil clubs, probably from September of 2020 maybe. And I just love the way that looked. This is one of my new iron finial, what did I call this one? Curly dotted border. So it's got the curls and the dots. I thought it was, I couldn't remember if it was iron. And then these were the cardstock inner covers that are going to be for my journal inserts. And what I did again was printed on cardstock this time in the monochrome. I stitched some fabric down and then I glued some trims, different ones on each of the journals. So now what I'm going to do is organize these into piles. I believe I have 30 pages. So I'll have 10 sheets of paper folded in half per a journal. And I will get that all organized and I'll come back and we will bind these together. I've laid out all the pages and I actually have 11 sheets of paper folded in half per a journal. So what I'll do is first I'll grab a journal cover, then I will grab from one from each pile and stack these together until I have all the pages stacked inside a journal cover. Now that I have all the pages stacked together the way that I want them in the order that I want them, I want to make sure that I have them adjusted top to bottom. For example, I know that the coloring book page is just a little bit shorter, so I want to make sure it's centered. And then I have these large paper clips. You could also use binder clips, however you can to hold all the pages together while you punch the holes and sew the signature together. I've got a template here and so what I'm going to do is lay this down in the center. Basically it's for my pamphlet stitch. So I'll poke three holes in the spine. I want to make sure that my page stays bead up so that when I punch the hole straight up and down it goes through the spine and not off to one side or the other. I need some thread and I'm using waxed linen thread. I feel that it is the best because it's sturdy. It doesn't shift my pages and it lasts for a really long time. I want three times the height of my journal. So one, two, and three and I'm going to go ahead and just cut enough for all three journals that I need to make and then I have a book binders needle I do offer these in my shop 
they are very sturdy. They come two for five dollars, so they don't bend. I'm pushing really hard. You can kind of tell by the indention on my finger, and they don't bend. And they have a nice elongated hole. It doesn't flare out like a darning needle would. I'm going to start in the center of my journal and poke out to the outside, again doing a pamphlet stitch. I'm going to make sure that there's not any extra loops and I'm going to hold the tail that was on the inside up towards the top and pull it a little bit tight so that when I go through the center again, I don't split the thread. And then once I have the thread to the inside, I'm going to slip it up under the first stitch at the top. I get a hold of the needle. And then what I like to do is pull these tight and make sure that there's not any loops or bundles of thread. And then I'll tie what is called a square knot or some people call it a surgeon knot, just basically tying it off a couple of times. And I will leave a little bit of excess in case we want to put charms on here. And then I'll remove the paper clips. And that is my first journal insert. Well, I'm going to repeat that on the other two. All right, all three journals have been bound together. So now what I'll do is create the outer cover, which is going to be a Midori style cover. So as you can see, these are quite fluffy. In fact, I probably could have probably made another signature and split these up just a little bit but this is what it is and when I measured beforehand I figured it would be roughly three and a half inches wide <laughs> that's gonna be a big one let me tell you so I've gone ahead and I've cut some chipboard pieces this one is six inches by nine inches and this one is i think three and a half yes three and a half by nine inches and i had some cardstock that was two-sided and i decided that these are going to be my insert uh, front and back panels and then this is going to be over the spine so now what I need to do is pick out some fabric. I'm going to do a fabric cover. I have this piece of fabric and it's kind of stretchy. I believe it's for garment making. And I think what I want to do is look at my template again. And I know that I want to make this where it's about an inch wider than my cover. So I'm just kind of laying this out here and I'm going to trim this off so that it's about an inch longer than my cover. This is where I like having my quilters mat because I can lay down my quilting ruler and get straight cuts. All right, so now I have my foundation and I'm trying to decide if I want to collage some other fabrics on here. So I'm going to grab some fabrics and lay them out and see what kind of design I want. And then I'll be right back. I've laid out some scraps of fabric as well as a digital of the All About Robins printed on ivory. And then I had this scrap of paper from Tattered Angels or I think it's called Origins paper. And I've got a little piece of lace here. So what I wanna make sure that I do is not get this too far over from one side or to the other. So I'm using my chipboard piece as a guide. So I know that about an inch from this edge, well, it's okay if this hangs over, it'll fold to the inside. And this will be part of the spine. So what I'm going to do now is basically tack these pieces down with a little bit of a lean's tacky glue. That way they won't move around on me too much. I think I will wait to glue this piece down until I have sewn all of these pieces together. So I'm just going to put glue in the middle of this piece, not out to the edge because I do plan to stitch around this. So I'm just going to lift this piece up and then put a few dots of glue on there. And then these were like scraps, so I'm just going to put a few dots to kind of help hold those in place. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. I have a regular thread, regular needle. I'm using black thread. And remember, use new thread whenever you're sewing. If you have old thread and you're noticing that the thread keeps breaking, it's too old. Get rid of that for sewing. You can use it for making little nests of embellishments, but don't use it for sewing. So I'm going to go over there, zigzag stitch all the way around. I want to make sure that I don't get into the glue. So that's why I wanted to make sure I didn't have any out there to the edges. And I want to stitch around all these pieces to help hold it in place. I'm going to start with this inner piece so that it will help hold down all the other pieces. When I get to a corner, I'm going to raise my presser foot and then just rotate this around. Okay, so I've stitched down all the pieces and I'm okay with loose threads. I think the next thing I want to do is attach this piece of lace. And what I want to do is I'm trying to decide if I want to stitch around that outside edge because you'll see the black stitches. I could swap out my thread. I do have some here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tack it down with some Aline's Tacky Glue and then I'm going to stitch around this outside edge and maybe even stitch in the middle to hold it in place. I'm laying an acrylic block on here to help hold that lace down a little bit. I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and swap out my thread. All right, so I've swapped out the thread. I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine and stitch all around this outside edge to help hold this lace down. And I may come in here in a couple of areas and tack it down in the middle. I didn't quite have it threaded correctly, so I had to fix that. And I think I've got it, so now I'm going to continue sewing. I didn't even show you that I was sewing it down, but I did. I went ahead and stitched around the pieces or the outside edge. You can kind of see the stitches, but it's not real noticeable. All right, so I think now I'm ready to start putting together the cover. So I'm going to flip this over, and I've got my chipboard pieces that are going to go on the inside. And again, I want to make sure that I have this first piece in the right position so that when I fold this over I'm right at that edge okay so what I'm going to do is glue this piece down first I'm just using Aline's tacky glue and I just kind of make a zigzag pattern all over and then I will position this where I want it Check it to make sure that's where I want it. Yes, I think that'll look good once it's folded over from top to bottom and on the sides. And they want at least the thickness from the next piece when you put this down so you have a little bit of a gap. Otherwise, when you go to move this cover, it will bind up. So I kind of play with it a little bit to see how far apart I need it. And then we'll glue this piece down as well. And then we'll put this the same distance away as we did the first. If you have really thin fabric, you may want to use two layers. Otherwise, your glue could bleed through to the outside. All right, so next what I'm going to do is fold in the corners and then the edges. And I'll glue this down. I'm placing an acrylic block on these corners to help hold that fabric down. All right, so while that's being adhered into place, I think I want to use this as my tie. It's some crocheted, I don't know, it was clearance, $1.99. I believe it was probably back when Michaels was having a sale and I could get an additional percentage off of their clearance items. And what I think is this would be a really cute bow if it's tied on here. So I want to cut a piece that's long enough that just in case I want to make it a little bit longer, so I'm kind of playing around with this. So I'm gonna make it longer than necessary because it's easier to cut it shorter. It's harder to add length. 
All right, so I know that my cover is nine inches. So if I go about the four and a half inch mark, so I'm gonna take one of these pieces and lay that right in here at the four and a half inch mark. And I have some packing tape that I'm gonna put well inside here. Because I plan to glue a panel on top, I also plan to sew around this outside edge. I'm just gonna use this as a guide to go over here, come in about the same distance, and then put down a piece of this packing tape to help hold it in place. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going back to the sewing machine and I will stitch around this outside edge, which will help hold the fabric to the chipboard. And it'll also hold my ties that I'm gonna use for my journal together. I am gonna switch back to my black thread because I don't want white stitches on the outside edge. I could, but I don't want them. <laughs> It's always a good idea to test your machine whenever you replace your thread. All right, so I'm gonna stitch around this outside edge. I went ahead and added a couple of extra stitches where this is tied into this so that hopefully it wouldn't pull free. So they would have a little bit of uh, security there. But here is the outer cover. And as you can see, it's gonna be a chunky one right there. And I think what I want to do now is let's place the inside covers. So prior to the video, I went ahead and stitched along the top and the bottom so that I would have that stitched look on my pages. So I'm gonna put that down, grabbing my bone folder here. And I'm going to add glue across the top here, down the sides and then across the middle. And then what I like to do is go ahead and put some glue on the chipboard itself on either side of the gap, if you will. And then I'll center this. And I'm using my bone folder to help smooth out that glue and adhere these two together. Now I'm gonna take my bone folder and kind of go into the groove where the pages are separate the front cover from the spine. I'm just kind of working that into that groove a little bit. All right, I want this to dry completely before I really bend this. So I'm gonna leave that flat and then go ahead and put in my front and back inserts. I took some cardstock and cut it to fit the same size and then stitched a little ribbon on there so that I'd have a little pocket when you open up the front of the journal in the back. I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes and I'm gonna get my template prepared for where I need to punch holes for my Midori bands. I want this to be a Midori style cover. So I made a template that is three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. And I have folded it so I know where the halfway mark is and then I did halfway between those two marks and then this is just an estimation of where I need to mark my holes. So I'm going to line this up in my cover and I have gone up and down with my sides to make sure that they're working properly and I think what I'm going to do is slide this down just a little bit and make a mark here, here, and here and then I'll slide this the other way and make a mark here, here, and here. And I'm gonna use my Cropodile hole punch to punch some holes in my journal cover. I'm gonna make sure I've got the punch some other stuff earlier. I wanna clean out that hole. So I'm just gonna come in here and punch some holes. And I just clean away the excess. Now, if you like to use the rivets or brads on yours be my guess i don't think it's necessary when you're using thick enough chipboard pieces and i don't really put super tight elastic in my midori covers i keep it somewhat loose so it doesn't pull on the spine 
All right, so what I like to do is kind of figure out how much elastic I'm going to need. I'll pull some off my spool here. And I start, I don't know why, but I kind of start from the inside and I will go in and then I will go across on the top pole. Kind of pull it. And then I'll go down on the bottom. And then from the outside, I'll go back into the inside. Go up to the top again. Back through this center hole. And then I'll leave my tail laying. I'll just kind of adjust this a little bit. I don't want it super long. Okay, and then I will guess by coming down and then back up again and trimming this piece. So I'll start, this is at the top, so I'll go down to the bottom and then go from the outside to the inside. Sometimes you have to move the fibers out of the way. And then I'll just make sure that these are not flopping around, okay? Not super duper tight because you don't want to have your cover curl on you. And I just tie a loose knot. Just kind of make it somewhat loose. And I don't want these to stick out past my journal cover. So I'll just trim these off. A little bit and I do it this way because if the bands start to loosen up too much because you're taking the journals in and out and you want it tighter well you can take a hold of this untie it and then tie it a little bit tighter so I'm going to slip the journal covers in or the journal inserts in just going to the center this is one fluffy journal I could probably have made the spine a little bit wider even but I wanted to stick around three and a half inches. And I think I'm going to leave that somewhat long. Well, there is the journal finished. I may come back in and add something on the spine, but it's time for dinner. So I'm going to take a break and I may come back here and add some more to it. Or I may just show you a flip through. While I'm waiting for dinner to arrive, I found a piece of lace and I've already applied some of the best glue ever to it. And I think what I want to do, I'm going to turn this so I can see it a little better, is I'm just going to lay this lace down the spine and kind of press it into place here. And then I've got a couple of acrylic blocks that I'm going to lay on top so that that can press that glue into the lace and then when I come back from dinner we'll look at the the rest of this how it came together okay I'm done with dinner and I have let this dry and of course it's a stark white lace that I put on here so I think what I want to do is I've got some distress ink walnut stain so I'm going to ink this up. I'm trying to get it where I can position this and I'm going to come in here and just kind of brush it over the lace a little bit and kind of grunge it up. It's a little bit too stark white for my taste. And I figure maybe doing this will kind of tone it down just a little bit. Had I planned ahead, I could have dyed it with maybe some coffee or tea. But I think rubbing a little bit of distress ink over the edge of that finishes it off and I think that just helps kind of bring this journal together I'm going to leave the back there may be a little bit of a smudge on here so I'm going to take some water and see if I can't uh, clean that off looks like it's come off there so it doesn't look too bad well there is the finished journal with how it looks all put together I think I'm going to do a separate video of a flip through. So thank you so much for watching the tutorial of putting together the journal inserts and the journal cover. Please, if you would, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, do use that comment box down below. If you have any questions about the products that I use, do check out my description box because I do offer chipboard in my shop.
All right, everybody, come back to watch the flip through video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.